Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Real Estate of Mind show with your host, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. Hello, everybody. Where we help average everyday people create wealth through real estate investing, right? That's what we do here. And so, as you know, we're called the Real Estate of Mind show. And we have a lot of people come on here and talk about real estate investing and, um, you know, what they've done, all that kind of stuff. And we're always asking them what their mental mindset is. We thought today we'd take a little bit of a shift. And we thought we'd go a different direction because we have a very powerful uh, female business owner here who has built an amazing insurance business. And she really resonates what we talk about with entrepreneurs. We know a lot of our listeners are female. We have a lot of female students that follow us as well. And we love to empower everybody, not just females. We seem to like to do the female thing too. So I've got daughters and a beautiful wife and all that. And I'm going down a weird hole here. So anyways, <laughs> let me pull back out of that. So um, I want to uh, let Amber do the official introductions here of our guest today. Yes, we are super excited to have Sabrina Lloyd on the podcast today. Um, Sabrina, welcome. Oh, I'm so glad and honored to be with you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. So tell us a little bit about your company, a little bit about your background, your company, how you got started. Right. So how my beginnings are, it really resonates with uh, what you guys do, which is investing, right? And the first thing you have to invest into is yourself. Um, I grew up my whole life training and investing into myself to become a medical doctor. And that investment didn't really pan out for me because I got thrusted into the business world and becoming and learning how to be an entrepreneur. And so the only thing that helped me catapult above everyone else because business is tough. And what a lot of people don't understand is like, it sounds so great. When you see people that are successful in business, you want to be them, but do you want to go through everything they've been through? And the only way that you can really answer is like, I want to be in your shoes is like, can you walk the walk, not just talk the talk. And I love this about business because what I learned and what I teach my team is that the first important thing that you have to do is invest in your mind. And when you build your mind up, when you, you know, when you toughen yourself. I call this having like chef hands. You know, when, when you're cooking and you've never cooked before and you grab a hot pan, you're just reactive, right? You drop the pan, you make a mess. And this is what happens to people that get into business, right? It's the same for real estate. It's the same for insurance. They're just so reactive. They don't know how to just like, you know, toughen your hands up, keep on doing it. And how you do that is just learn how to develop your mind. And through your mind, you really understand how powerful you are. You allow your creative juices to flow. And that's the gift of business, isn't it? It's the, the gift to, to do so much more than you could at an average job. And so how you make the most in terms of returning on your investments is just always going back to investing into yourself, into your mind. And I've done this in every stage in my life. And it's just, you know, it's given me such a great return, a greater return than anything I could ever ask for. Um, I think all of us experienced this in 2020, right? We kind of just got oh, yeah. exactly. slapped in the face and then whoever could just take the hit and keep on going. I mean, you're going to win. Yeah, you're not you going to win. You want them or not. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to dominate. So I, I love this and I love what you guys do. I think it's incredibly important to send that message of real estate in the mind. There's no more important real estate that you could ever really own. That's right? very true. I always say, I love when you opened up and talked about hard businesses. And I think that people sometimes look at people that are successful like us. And I want you to tell the folks in just a second how big of a business you've built. But, you know, business is a blood sport. Would you yeah. agree? It's a blood sport. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a winner take all kind of a thing. And it's, it's nice to be in business. It's cutesy. It's, you know, you get into it though. You're right. It's like grabbing a hot pan. Tell the folks what you've built before we go any further. I want people to understand the, the, the mass and, you know, depth and breadth of what you've, what you've built. Yeah. So I really believe that um, if you're playing a, a weak game, it doesn't demand much of you. Right. So business is a blood sport. That's why I've, I've coined the term like business warrior. And I apply a warrior mentality to everything that we do. And what we've done is, you know, I came to Chicago with, you know, uh, three other individuals and we've grown from a team of three to a team of 200 agents. Okay, uh, we've been yeah. able to scale yeah. from just being in Illinois to now being in 17 states. 
Um, now, last year we got tested again because our model was seeing people and meeting them face to face. And then we had to instantly switch to a virtual environment. Yeah, and yeah. it turned out to be such a blessing in disguise. And what, you know, just going back and working with the team and developing them and to get them to see how this is a good thing and not a bad thing. And just that retraining. We actually won like so many awards in the process of just reinventing, innovating ourselves continuously. Um, how we started is not who we are right now. And I think that's incredibly important for people to learn in business. Never look at where you are in the moment. Just keep moving, keep growing, keep developing yourself. And for me to go from like three to 200 is not easy. It is a, a lot of gray hairs. You know, this is why yeah. I dot my hair blonde now to blend it all in, but <laughs> right. it's worth it. You know, this is what you always have to remember. It's so worth it because the freedom comes from the labor, right? You know, and there is no freedom without labor. Right. And so I think what you're sharing is so applicable to, to everyone that's listening, regardless of whether they're a male or a female. But before we actually started our podcast, you and I were chatting a little bit and you mentioned that uh, the insurance field has been a very male dominated industry. And I always say that about real estate too, that it's, it's very male dominated. That is shifting and changing. But tell us about, you know, how you kind of overcame that stereotype and, and overcame the challenges of being a woman building a business. You know, I'm sitting right here. Yeah. So we're clear. It's okay. All right, good. You, have, you have daughters. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love this. And this is a ta uh, topic that's like my passion for the next decade of my life. You know, I just had a, a baby girl and uh, before the baby girl, I had two sons. Wait, so wait, wait, your fourth baby girl. No, no, no. So I, we have, we have two sons and now I just had a baby girl. Right. Oh, so okay, still great. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So I, you know, with two sons, I was like, Oh, this is it. Like I can be tough and I can still do what I do. And I had to really toughen up my mind because I, I work in a man's world. And yeah. I say this with the utmost respect because I have a deep admiration for strong men. And what to me, what a strong man is, is someone who doesn't get intimidated by women, but I wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't for the strong mentors and men that helped to train me and helped to develop me. So I, I love this. And I, I always tell this to women in leadership, open up to greatness, period. Don't look for someone that looks like you to get advice from them. Look for anyone who is amazing, period, and take whatever you can and develop yourself, right? And the thing about learning is that we are visual leaders. So this is why it's so incredibly important for women to develop themselves because more women will do well if there's more women in leadership positions so that they can, you know, have that visual example of what can be. But if you have no visual example, just learn from strength, period. And that's what I did. You know, I was, I'm grateful that I grew up in a household of all females. Um, so my dad was tough on us. He was really <laughs> tough and he didn't raise us to think we were any different. So when I entered the business world, I wasn't thinking male, female. I was just thinking good, bad, like who's good. Let me learn from them. Let me attach to that. Let me open myself up to being mentored by the best. And that's how I, I grew. I never wanted to like box myself into that necessarily, but I I'm see gonna, the importance of it. I'm going to throw you a curveball, And so I want you to talk to the men in the audience for a minute. Any man who's any man who's a dad out there, what do, what advice would you give us? So I've got, you know, Amber, we've got a, a little girl turns eight, uh, on next Monday, month, yeah, a couple of days, right. In, in eight, she turns. And then, uh, I have a 16 year old girl also, I also have a 33 year old long story, but, um, but the two that I've got home, um, you know, last night I had a dinner, I had a date with my daughter. I make a point to go on dates with my daughter. And that's something that I realized through COVID that I was missing. Cause I was like, I, I'm not connecting with my 16 year old. Like I should be. And I realized she used to play basketball and now we're in New York where we can't, you know, do anything. So we're, I I said, I said, honey, I said, I'm missing the time with you. I just realized that we used to travel together and, and stay in hotels together and go to games. And I pick you up from games late and I was always there with you. And now I'm not doing that. So I'm now reconnecting with her. We had dinner last night. It was a great dinner. Like I, I, I she had a permit. I helped her drive home at dark. That was an interesting drive home, but we, we did our thing. I would like you to talk to the men for just a minute. What can we do? to help empower our young women before they get 
to your age, and before they get to the business owner, before they even get to the, because I think you, you, your dad, it sounds like gave you an amazing foundation. It sounds like your dad gave you this foundation of strength, right? I'm sure he had his flaws, like everybody, like every parent does, right? We all do, but he had a lot of strength. It sounds like just from this few minutes of talking to you, what could you tell us as dads that we should be doing, we should be focusing on to empower <clears throat> our girls, to yeah, not yeah. ever think of themselves as being different or le less than or not, you know, what different, certainly, but le less than or whatever. I, we, I want to empower my girls to be as strong as they can. I watch you talk. And I think, yeah, I want my girl to be on a podcast someday going, yeah, my dad was my dad inspired me. So maybe you can help inspire some some dads out there. I love this question because I think this is the question that doesn't really get asked as much from females, right? Um, from men saying like, what exactly do we have to do? And and the truth is, is that I, I would, I didn't grow up only in like rainbows and butterflies. My, my father was so strict, so tough, so orderly. And, you know, to me, this is why I live a very principled life because I know success doesn't have a gender. It doesn't have an age. It doesn't have those boundaries. It has principles. And if you can, if as a father, you look at your daughter and you say, I'm not trying to make you a strong woman. I'm just trying to make you strong. You know, then they, they go into any workforce looking at it, not from a disadvantage, but from an advantage of strength period. And it's almost counterintuitive, right? Because we are different and, and that's a hundred percent the truth. And women have certain strengths that men don't have, yes, but don't men know. have strengths that women don't have. Sure. And so what matters, and this is what all men need to understand. And it's, it's just give us the opportunity. Just give us the opportunity. Open a, a little bit, like start to open your mind and never look at us like you're a woman. Just look at us like, are you good? Are you an individual that's qualified? Yes, that's yeah. everything. And once you can get out of that whole conversation of like, you know, it's not that we need more women. We need more good, strong women. And and, and if it takes a man to raise that up, then that's awesome. That's great. It's not a I, bad thing. That was a great, and I'm sorry. Just, I just want to say one more thing. I wrote that down. I'd like anybody who's listening. If you're a man, you got daughters out there. Actually, if you have kids out there, this is not just for, for daughters. I think that what you just said was powerful. Success doesn't have a gender. It has principles. That's, yes. that's awesome. I, I, that's I, awesome. Awesome. I awesome. I, lo I love that. From and a parenting standpoint, I love it. I'll shut up now. Go ahead. I, I also <laughs> love that it sounds like your dad raised you with good self-esteem because you said you didn't go into the workforce having those, you know, like, like self-imposed boxes around yourself. But I wonder... Did anybody else try to impose those boxes on you because you were a female? And if so, how did you overcome those? All the time. And it's still happening. But you know what? I prove people wrong all the time. That's my job. My job is to like, I'm not naive. I see it, but I don't focus on it it actually like lights me up in some kind of sick way that oh, I have to go on a mission to prove you wrong. Right. And everything that you think about me, I am going to crush in your mind. And I will, you know, what my job right now is, is to pave and clear a pathway for other females to walk and to enter into. And I take that responsibility very seriously. I don't take it lightly. And I'm, and I'm grateful that I am blessed with the mindset to forge through all that noise and all those naysayers. It's just, it, it happens. You know what I mean? And when, when I say like, I, I'm, I'm married to a very strong man and he, thank goodness. And I always tell this to women, there is no more important decision that you'll ever make in your life than who you choose to spend the rest of your life with, uh -huh. you know? And so like, you, this is not something to take lightly. It's not something to rush into because you know, if I went home every day to someone who was fueling me up in the wrong way and clouding my vision, uh, it wouldn't be good for me. And for people to think that that doesn't have an effect on you, it's almost the reason why that, that term like independent woman, it's almost dangerous, right? Because yeah. I, I've become stronger out of learning about men and how they operate from working with my husband and understanding it, like understanding how men think so that I could work with them and make them see like, well, this is what I'm about. And we're about the same thing here. 
just take, take me out of it as a female and just give me an opportunity and let me prove myself to you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it sounds like you had a really good advantage in the way that you were raised and that you, you know, came out of that with really good self-esteem and without those self-limiting beliefs. I don't think everyone is quite that. And I'm not, I don't want to minimize, you know, what you've had to go through and that you've, and it's awesome that you've used the, um, when the times that you've been challenged as fuel to propel you forward and to prove them wrong. Um, in my age, I think you're probably a little bit younger than me. I'm 47. Um, and I think women my age and older, um, and I, I think the younger generation is definitely changing. I think that there's more of an empowerment movement and more of, um, um, I want to use the word entitled, but I don't want to use that in a negative way. It's, it's, it's what you were just saying though, that we are just as qualified as anybody else out there. Yeah. However, women, I think my age and above, it's almost like we're raised in an environment where we needed permission yeah, to, yes, to be yes. great. You yes. Know? So I'm turning, I'm turning 40 next week. So I'm excited. Congratulations. That, those those tens you. are always tough, aren't they? The tens are I tough. Know, it, it, I know, it's, they a, are. it's a transitioning. I'll, I will say that, but it is, it is. I, will, I will say this, like, you know, the, the time in my life where I became the strongest was when my father uh, kicked me out of the house at 19 years old and said, go fend for yourself. And that was the scariest moment of my life. And what that did inside of me, I will never take it back because, you know, like when, when you start to realize that you have to be your own white horse and you have to be your own person, your biggest advocate, then what happens is everything changes and you start to look at people like, how can you add to my life instead of like being dependent on people and going into relationships that, you know, you benefit one another as opposed to taking from one another. And so, you know, in that moment, I am, I'm just blessed that I had someone in my life who's now my husband, who's strong and that we were, we became strong together. But when I was, when I was kicked out of my house, it, it flipped my whole world. And I had to learn how to work full time, go to school full time. I was studying to be a doctor. When I moved to the States, you know, I didn't have anything. I had a bag of clothes and a car. And where I were you, from, where were you from? Canada. So oh, Canada. I moved, yeah, from Canada to the US. And it was the most scary time in my life where all I knew was I had to keep moving and I had to keep going and I had to keep growing. And I'm so grateful that I got into sales and entrepreneurship because it helped me understand that I have the power to have control over my life. So the same way that I was raised, like there's no Prince Charming coming to save me. I have to save myself. Well, that's what business is. When yeah. you're in business, no one's coming to save you. You better <laughs> learn how to save oh, yourself. And when yeah. you can build, you know, that ability to handle pressure and, and no matter what's coming at you, you can rise above it. I'm telling you, it's the greatest feeling and it's ultimately the greatest gift in the world. As you were talking, I was looking down at my phone for a second because you reminded me of a quote and I'm going to have to send it to you when this is over, but it's a picture of this little girl and she's, um, you know, kind of got ratty hair and she's like got warrior clothes on. She's got the the black things under her face. Like she's been in a, in a, in a battle and the quote is, you know, do not raise your daughter to find the white knight, teach her how to use the sword herself. Absolutely. And I like, that. I, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I, I actually saved that because that's how we want to raise our daughters. You know, it's like, you know, it's awesome. And it, that's not saying that, you know, you want to go through life alone and independent, you know, but, but have the resources at your fingertips that you can do that on your own. You know, this, this applies to, I think to all, all, all kids, in, you know, and I certainly am an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur since I was 19. That's all, my whole life. I, I you, probably, you just, you know, you know, you know, in your heart, if you're an entrepreneur, you know, you know, yeah. and not, not all kids are entrepreneurs, but this, this applies to even if you don't go into the field of business or go, even whatever, just to be confident, just to right. be, just to have that self-confidence. I think what you're saying, I think you're going to inspire a lot of people, Sabrina. I think you really, I, I think, think she does. I yeah. think you do. I mean, I think you, you, you do now clearly. And I mean, I'm just getting to know you and I feel inspired by it, which is great. I think my, like, I want my daughter to listen to this, you know, so I'm thinking about this, this right now. I think that's uh she's in a really, she just turned 16 and she's at that age where, 
you know, I'm looking back thinking, boy, I was a good dad. Was I a great dad? Was I a good dad? You know, you start, I don't know if you do this. I question myself a lot. Like, was I bad there? I could have been better, you know, I, I, whatever. But now I'm looking saying, okay, I've got, a, I've got a couple more years in the house, maybe another year left in the house because you'll have your own car soon and you're going to be out. And I, I want to, I want to maximize that time. You know, I want to maximize that time to let her go out in the world and feel like she doesn't need a, a white knight. I, I don't ever want her to have that. And, you know, for my, my folks generation, that's what, how it was. You know, the husband worked, the mom stayed home and just the world's just different now. But I think having the principles that you talked about are so powerful. Get kicked down, get back up. That's that's life. That's Rocky. That's I, life. And I, <laughs> just, I think you know. that a lot of people and I think you'd probably agree with this, Sabrina. I, I think a lot of women kind of use that as an excuse. You know, they, they use being a woman as an excuse and, you know, I'm just going to get looked over. Even I did when we first got into um, flipping houses and real estate, we had very different roles than most people. Glenn was the one that found the deals and negotiated and all that. And I did the project management. I was the one dealing with the contractors and, and all of that. And I used to, I used to they like, scare me. Of, I used to feel kind of <laughs> like, like really frustrated because I felt like I had to prove myself to the contractors over and over and over. And they always looked at me like I was stupid. Oh, she's just the dumb blonde from Texas or, you know, and we would inevitably, we would go into a house, both of us together, and they would look at Glenn to talk. They wouldn't look at me. So I always felt like I was, you know, second best or less than, or, you know, so in, in, in the beginning, I blamed it on the contractors. Oh, they're just male chauvinists, blah, blah, blah. And some of them are. But it wasn't until I got more confident in my own abilities and my own self-esteem that I realized that it wasn't just the guy's problem. A lot of that was me. It was my mindset. It was my self-limiting beliefs, thinking that I wasn't good enough or I wasn't you know, so, so when that shifted for me, you know, you're talking about mindset a lot when that shifted for me and I stopped asking for permission to do things and just took control of it instead and realized that it's me just kind of like owning my position and, and kind of commanding the, the scene that things started to change. And now if I meet a contractor, I don't have to go through that dance of, of, of them, like looking at me, like I'm just some girl it's very, very different now because my confidence is different. And I think that that's what, like when we do trainings, even for other women that are learning how to get in real estate. And I think this could apply to any business is just be confident, you know? And I, I, I don't think you can just tell someone to be confident though. I think it has to be practiced. Yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you like a little, I don't want to, it's a secret, right? It's something that I know. And, you know, I'm dangerous because I, I know things like I study things. Um, this is like my whole life. I'm just really good at studying anything. And you give me a little bit of time and I will smoke you. That's like what I excel at. Right. And so, you know what I've come to learn? You know, that feeling that you felt when they were, you know, both of you were in that conversation and they shifted yes. towards the, the male. That happened to me, too. But you know what I knew in that moment? that moment, that male still feels the same way that I feel like everyone has insecurities, right. every male, female, we all have insecurities. And what you have to do is you have to use everything that happens to your advantage. So when they would look at the male and pass me up, I would use that to my advantage. I would find a way to use that to help to aid me and to help me grow and get better. And so, you know, if I ever had to play dumb, I never let anything offend me. I literally went into any scenario and said, I will use everything that happens to my advantage and I'm going to win. So I always knew what my end was and I didn't care what happened. And even though I could see their eyes shift, what happens to a lot of females is you get emotional in that moment and you lose control of your thoughts and you start shifting like why are they looking at the man and not me I'm here to tell you who cares like see it and then just move on and still win you know that's that's you're trying to fight against so many hundreds of years of men being in business and women not being in business you know, yeah. so I wouldn't play that. I wouldn't try to win that fight. I would just like in that moment, never lose control. And just remember that man has the same insecurities as you. Sabrina, that even that in and of itself, though, is a golden nugget because just that you have the mindset to use a situation like that as an opportunity to use it to your advantage 
because there's there's two ways you can go with that. Well, I guess there's three. You could remain neutral about it. You can right. use it to your advantage or you can let it affect your self-esteem and make it lower. And that's what I think a lot of people do is they go to that. Oh, I'm not good enough or I'm not, you know, I'm never going to be credible or, I'm, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm a woman. They're never going to look at me the same way. Find I, that that's such a golden nugget to use it to your advantage and, and to have that mindset, though. How do you tell our listeners you clearly do things to keep your mind strong? That's just that I maybe I'm wrong, but I'll tell you for me, I have to work at it. It's a constant bet. There's a, you know, I'm, I'm an eighties guy. I have the weirdest taste in music. I can like anything from James Taylor to rap to uh, Megadeth. I have the weirdest taste in music, but one of the songs I like is from Megadeth. And, and there's a, there's a line that says there's a war inside my head. If I take a day off, I'll be dead. And that's a song that I had. I, I had that in my head. I went skydiving many years ago and that was something I played in the way there to get me all jacked up, but that's, that's stuck in my head. And I've always thought that. How do you overcome the demons in your head? Because we've all got insecurities. I love what you said. Very, be vulnerable. We've all got them. Every one of us has got them. And, and a lot of them are similar, right? So how, what do you do on a regular basis? What's Sabrina's routine to overcome that? And to stay strong. Yeah, how do you, to stay what, mentally tough. Yeah. You know, I think what everyone has to acknowledge is that there's always a demon and there's always an angel. And those two are never, ever going away. So every day you wake up, you get to choose which one are you going to fuel up? Which one are you going to feed? Right. And so the people that say like, I'm naturally strong and this just comes to me, excuse my language, but we know what that is. That is a bunch of bull. It is. And so, and, and for people like what you, that is an insecurity for not admitting that you have to work on it. Right. And so you, you can't, you can't fool principles and whatever you feed grows. Right. So if you use the feed. So one of the things that I believe is so necessary is you've got to know who you are, right? And how do you do this? You don't do this by like following the crowd and doing what everyone's doing. Like find out what you want to do. Be okay being by yourself because in those moments where you're by yourself, that's when you really start to zone in on what's important to you, what matters to you. And when it's really like inside of you, no one can mess with that. And then you feed that every day. And then when you're in a crowd and there's a lot of noise, you don't have to get lulled into that. You can stand alone. You can look at this and say like, "Mm, doesn't align with me, with my principles. It's not what I'm going to jump into right now. Right. And I think that's like a, a really big missing thing for the world right now. And, and how do you cultivate this? The one thing I can do as like an accelerant is hang around other strong people, yeah. you know, yeah. hang around other strong people that have the courage to tell you like your, your thinking is stinking. It's wrong. It's not good. It's, you need to sharpen up. You know, that's not, that's not going to get you where you want to go. And if you have the courage to surround yourself with strong people, and if you have the courage to be alone and to cultivate this strength within yourself, then you don't have to worry about being swayed by trends. You know, what's so amazing about real estate? Like, so I've, I've made a lot of money in real estate also because we take the money from insurance and where do we put it sure. uh, in real estate? Right. And so thank goodness we've made some like good decisions along the way. And, and I will tell you this, like, real estate is, is so powerful because it lasts, right? It's, it's never going anywhere. Right. And so this is why you, you've got to look at it. Like you, you are the same way. What's going to make you last. What's going to make you endure, you know, build up those things. Don't be following trends. You know, when I hear people selling things like, you know, no offense or anything. If you're learning for just sales purposes to build skills, it's one thing. But if your thing is like, I'm going to sell energy drinks. I don't know about that. Like how long can that last? I love insurance because it is an industry. It's a behemoth. It's not going anywhere with or without you. It's going to still go. Same thing with real estate with or without you. It's still going to go. It knows what it is. Right. You used an interesting word a second ago that I want to kind of bring back up, though. You said it takes courage to be around people that are also strong minded. And I think that's a very interesting word to use there because 
you're right. It does take courage because, you know, we can, as human beings, we let our egos get in the way and, you know, we want to be the strongest person and that makes us feel good or that makes us feel important. But it does take courage to be around people that are smarter than you, that are stronger than you, that are better Mm -hmm. than you, but it helps you rise to the occasion. You also find out, you know, I'm 52. I just turned 52 and you find out through life. I've had a life it's been 30 years of self-development, self-improvement, books, courses, meeting, you know, talking to people like you, just, you know, again, trying really hard to surround myself with the right people. And you find out that we're not all that much different. You find right. they may have more mm-hmm. things in you. Their business might be bigger than you. They may have achieved a certain level that you've been trying to aspire to get to. At the end of the day, we're just people. You know, I hate to hate to use the old saying, but we all put our, our pants on one leg at a time. It, it really is true. And the more I've been around billionaires, I've had billionaire, you know, people associations. It's 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 uh, they're just people. They've had they've hit they've hit something in business that has taken off, and it's been great for them. But but you, it just it's amazing to me though. I think that it just it just our mindset is so important. And I when I asked you that question before, I'd like to know what you do because I like for me. My day starts, and I, I realized that when the year started, I had gotten off a path. I had I had mentally been going down a path. And most, most people that see me speak and see us on stage are like, oh, he always he always has his shit together. Well, that ain't true. <laughs> I have to work at it. For me, it's a it's a constant work. And and I can easily slip, you know, down the wrong path. And um I have to work at it. So I had to I realized that I was getting up in the morning and the first thing I was doing was checking Facebook. Now let me tell you, this past political season, that's the worst thing in the world I could be doing. You know, being on Facebook that whole time, it, it just starting my day. It's draining. It's also, it's also when you when you pull it up, it's like Russian roulette. Am I going to have good news or bad news today? And that's what starts my day. So I decided to, you know, go back to some fundamental principles, like you said, some principles. And for me, I get up and read my goals every day. What are my goals this year? I have a theme for the year I kind of have for myself every year. So I have a theme of what I'm going to work on that year for my own personal development. So I work on that. And I also make sure that I'm, I look at what I'm grateful for even just waking up in the morning, you know, there's just some things that get me off on the right path. And since I re- restarted that, that has really helped me personally. And I read, I, I, I do the audible thing. So I read with my ears, but I read and I do the audible and I, I love it. I make myself to at least a chapter a day. Sometimes I get hooked to it and I'm two or three chapters, but it's, I'm, I'm making my way through a lot of material and that I'm wondering if you have a routine that you do things that maybe you want to share with our listeners that are what you do. Like what does Sabrina do personally that Hey, this is what I do to keep my head together. Cause I'm, I'm just going to guess. I don't know, but you have the same problem that I've got. We've got every day. It's like, Oh, and you're like, Whoa, I gotta, I gotta pull myself back up, you know, and you gotta, you know, and, and we have to be our own white knight. I have to be my own white knight. You have to be your own in our minds. Our yeah, minds are yeah. so crucial. We've got to keep ourselves out of that stinking thinking. Like you said before. That, that gutter thinking just kills us. What does Sabrina do? Like I told you what I do. What do you do to keep yourself up? Yeah, so the one thing that is incredibly important for me is how I start every single day. And as a mother of three young kids, uh-huh. you know, a six-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old, you know, I wake up, um, you know, some before four o'clock, but every day, I mean, every day, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I wake up between four and 5 a.m. when no one is awake and my house is quiet. And this is the time where I feed myself. And I call this my dangerous zone because when I give myself this hour, it allows for me to fill myself up with what I want to fill myself up with. And it allows for me to give myself that time and that energy So then when like the day goes on and my children are taking for me, my husband's taking for me, my business is taking for me, it's okay because I already filled myself up. And like what happens with a lot of people, I think, is that you're reacting to your whole day. At the end of the day, you just feel depleted because you never gave yourself anything and you can't give what you don't have. And so the only way I can give my day the best, it really starts with that one hour. And, you know, some people do this by working out for me. It's, it's not, it's just me reading. I put good material inside of me. So I choose what I'm putting into my head instead of just going and like into a news feed and going down a rabbit hole, which I, where I should not be going, which we all do that. Right. And then when you, 
the key is like, have some situational awareness, have some self-awareness and catch yourself doing it and say like, stop this shit. Like it's not good. It's not kosher is not helping me. And so that's why like in that hour, I don't go into anything that is controlling where I'm looking. I pick up a book. I pick up something that is going to feed my mind with what I want to put into it. If I want to do nothing, that's my choice for that hour. If I want to work out, that's my choice for the hour, right? But yeah. that's my what I call my dangerous zone. So then when my kids wake up, I can be a better mom. You know, for my husband, I can be a, a better wife. And we're all like, there's no manual for being a perfect parent, you know, so I can think I'm raising God, no. good kids. God, no. <laughs> yeah. But the truth is, I won't know if I raise good kids until they're like in their 20s, 30s, 40s. And they're like, OK, they're yeah. good kids. You know, I know. we don't, we don't, we don't know. know what we're doing. Yeah. We don't know if we're messing them up or if we're helping them. That's a it's that's true. a you make it up as you go along. That, a lot of it. <laughs> that's a harder yeah. blood. That's a harder blood sport than business. business. So, yeah. I, I really agree. And like even for females, you know, like especially a lot of females are getting into business and they have kids. Like this is what I always say that people are like, how do you do this? You know, I always look at it and I always say like, well, if I can figure this out, doesn't that make me that much stronger than you? Like if I can be a female and have kids and figure it all out, like that's, that's a good thing. Never look at like a struggle, like a bad thing. You don't get stronger without the struggle. So I just really encourage people to like flip your thinking, whatever you think is a negative, it's actually a positive, you know, yeah. and sometimes the things that you think are a positive, it's actually your negative. It's your downfall. Right. And so like, if you can think like no one else, you can live like no one else, right? Yeah, really, really challenge your thoughts. I think that that's so good. But even that takes practice. Like you said, being aware of it and catching yourself doing it, just like if you're going down that rabbit hole of, of social media or whatever, or the news, you have to catch yourself before you get too far. And, yeah, yeah. and that that takes practice. It takes practice to be able to monitor your thoughts and, and see where they're going, because our thoughts create our feelings. And if you can change your thoughts, you can change the way you feel about things. And that can be very empowering even of itself. I loved um, in the beginning when you started out and you talked about, you know, building a business and is like developing and that mindset is like having chef hands. And that's so true because like, like I, yeah. I do most of the cooking and we have these, um, these stainless steel pots and they have stainless steel oh, handles too. And things. he's always complaining about these handles are hot. They now, suck. now I pick them up <laughs> and it's no big deal. Like, like, or I'll, I'll have the hot water on in the faucet, you know, like cleaning something off and he'll be like, Oh my God. So, I mean, the, like, like that analogy actually made me laugh inside. Um, and, but our daughter, <clears throat> so she's about to turn eight and we just converted, um, we're in upstate New York. So it's freezing cold here. And I am the worst winter mom ever because I hate being cold. So we don't go outside much in the spring, in the spring, summer and fall outside all the time. But uh, anyway, I converted our basement into like um, an obstacle course gym mm -hmm. and we did like um, monkey bars on the ceiling and all that. And so the other day she was in, in the summer, she was really great She outside, but now her hands have gotten kind of soft and everything. And so she'd only get, you know, two or three monkey bars and she'd fall. And so I think it was two nights ago, she, she goes, mommy, mommy, look, I'm getting calluses. What are those things called? I'm getting calluses. Like yeah. she was all excited about her hands toughening up, but it's that that's true. Whether it's our hands from, from work we're doing or our minds and you have definitely exhibited a mental toughness that, that people could aspire to. And I, yeah. I think that's awesome. Okay. As we wrap up, I want to say this. I, I took some notes while you were talking. I loved, I loved how you worded some things. Again, success doesn't have a gender. It has principles. Feed yourself. I think that, you know, it's what you said. You get up in the morning, you feed yourself because you, you're, you're right. You can't, you cannot give what you don't have. You can't. When I'm, when I'm, you know, I do workshops on a regular basis. I speak, I train, it's constant. I, if I'm not continually growing, I'll die. Right? There's nothing. If I'm not continually feeding my mind, what am I doing? I can't give to other people what I don't have. I don't, you know, I, I want to be growing. So they're like, wow, how's he know that? Well, cause I'm working. You know, maybe while you're watching whatever on the on the internet or watching the news feed, I'm feeding this just like you're feeding your mind, Sabrina. Right? You're 
you're feeding your brain saying, listen, I'm going to be strong today. And if, if you're like me, which I think we're probably pretty similar, I think you're probably saying, listen, I'm kind of feeling like weak in this area. Let me get this book. Let me get this because I, here's, here's an area I think I'm weak in. And I think some people don't focus on their weaknesses. And it's, it's a shame if you don't focus. You should say to yourself, I got a strength here. I'm good at that. But here, here's something that I'm struggling in. Let me try and work on that and get better. Let me talk to somebody who's better than me. Let me get around people like that. And then you put think like no one else so you can live like no one else. And that's a, I think it's a perfect way to wrap up our, you know, real estate of mind shows. Cause that's, that's, this has been great day, Sabrina. I got to tell you, this has been unexpected and great. I heard it was insurance. I'm like insurance. Okay. Well, we'll see how we do on the show. But, but honestly, you fit right into do, our yeah. demographic of people of what we teach and what we live and what we just everything and the parenting and the, all that stuff. This has been one of my favorite podcasts. Before you wrap up though, I do want to, I also wrote down, open yourself up to greatness. And I think that's such a key point because especially in the climate we're in right now, it's like so divided, but really everything's individual. And I think we can learn something from people regardless of their gender, regardless of their race, regardless of their age, regardless of anything about them. There are are things that we can, can learn from. And I think you got to check your ego at the door and just like be open to, to things. And like you, Glenn was just saying, um, uh, what was I saying? Uh, it must have been really good. You can't think what it is. So that's well, good. <laughs> well, it, it, I, I, did, I did. I just lost my thought. But it, but it had to do with, you know, we kind of, I, I hear the excuse a lot. Well, that's just the way I am. Like if somebody has a weakness, yeah. well, that's just the way I am. That's how I was raised or that's the way I am. And that is such a self-limiting belief. And if you can like keep yourself open to growing and opportunities. It's not just self-limiting. I'm going to say this because it's the truth. It's lazy. It is lazy to be like that because what you did is like you excuse yourself from the labor and the work that it takes to give yourself freedom in your life. And that's why, that's why I say like labor gives you freedom and it's counterintuitive because people are like, Oh, I don't want to work. I want to do whatever I want. Yeah. That's not how this goes. That's not how this goes. Okay. (laughs) And so you got to work on your mind. You got to work on your habits and listen, no one's perfect. And if you're around someone long enough, you can pick up their bad habits, but you have to like work yourself out of getting all those bad habits out of you. And if, if, if our parents put in like those first initial habits and mindsets and thoughts into us, a lot of us have to self-assess and say, is that really true? Is that really right? Cause some of it is just wrong and it's hurting and it's killing our dreams, our aspirations, our hopes. And so it takes effort to put that time and dedication into like cleaning that stuff out of our lives and, and, you're, and your you're, belief system. I want to tell all of our listeners, you're going to fail. You're going to fail over and over and over, but you have to get back up and keep going. And I'm not going to say you're going to fail permanently, but as you're learning this process and changing your habits, as Brina, I'm sure you agree with me, you're going to, you're going to go down a path. I've done, I've gone on a path. Oh, okay. I got good habits, good habits. You wake up one day and go, how do I get back in the bad habits? What am I doing there? Why am I, why, what am I doing? And so it's a constant battle. Again, it's a war inside my head. If I take a day off, I'll be dead. It gets easier as you develop better habits, but, right. but the initial starting point is tough. Our son is 21 and he's been struggling. He actually runs our Airbnb business and with Amber and um, uh, he's been struggling with procrastination. I said, son, you come by it naturally because your dad used to have that. I said, let me go get something. And I went up and up. I have hundreds of books that I, before Audible came along and I went up and I grabbed this book and it was a procrastination, overcoming procrastination book. Here's the funny part. I was so pissed off because I, I kept doing it. I don't remember what happened. It's over 20 years ago. Something happened. I missed an opportunity because I procrastinated and I got so pissed off. I ripped the book in half. <laughs> I ripped it in half da- down the binder. I'm not that strong. I didn't go down the other way, but I ripped it in half and I taped it back together. And I kept that book to remind myself that I lost my shit. I yeah. lost it and I failed, but I put the book back together. And I read it again. And now I'm much better at that. It's taken me years to get better. But I gave it to my son. For Christmas, actually, we went out to dinner and I said, I want to give you something. And I gave it to my son. He's like, okay, a book all taped together. And I said, this is something you're working on, but I want to tell you, your dad failed. But the only reason I'm where I am today is because I kept on pushing. I yeah. kept on pushing. And so I wanted to show, and I guess I want to share to the listeners that when you start this journey, you're going to start, you're going to eat right the first day and you're going to screw up. You're going to try and get up at four o'clock and you're not going to be able to, or whatever your time is when you have that time, you're going to try and fill up and you won't do it for a week. You'll drop the ball for two weeks or a month, but you can, you can, always start today mm-hmm. you can always start tomorrow you can always start right away to do something different 
And as long as you, you know, as long as you don't, our last podcast guest we had, actually, he had a quote that I'm going to, I'm going to say in this podcast, he said, it's impossible for you to fail until you decide to quit. Mm -hmm. And so that's the same thing with your, with your self-improvement journey. It's the same thing as you're building your mind, same exact thing. So Sabrina, this has been great. I have really enjoyed this today. Please tell, tell everybody how they can connect with you and learn more about Sabrina because you're awesome. I I love this. And, you know, this is, uh, thank you for that because I really want the next decade of my life to fulfill, not my job, but my calling. And I really feel like when you're blessed, uh, with the ability to push past things, like I want to share this with people. So on my Instagram is where I'm, where I start, like I am Sabrina Lloyd, and then I'm starting a podcast. It's going to be called stand alone and how to, you know, make yourself dangerous so that you can win you know, and, and it really does start with you knowing who you are. And so just teaching this to people and then having guests, I'd love to have you guys on there also, but, but just like cultivating that you got to go to work, you got to go to work on yourselves. And, you know, my, my business is Lloyd agencies. We do insurance for the transportation industry. Um, and it's been so, so good. It's about service, right? It's about how can you serve yourself How can you serve your next generation? That's what I love about insurance. It's setting up that next generation um, for for your business. Business is the ultimate way to serve the world. You know, when when someone starts a business, it helps other families. It helps. It's just it's a it's a beautiful thing. And yes, it is a blood sport. But I think a blood sport's a beautiful thing, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Only the strong will survive. Right, baby. Yeah. You got it. You got it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. we we understand each other. We're on the same yes. page. So, yeah. I get it. <laughs> I love it. Thank you guys for inviting me. Thank you for, for having me. And I look forward to connecting with you uh, yeah. in the future. Yeah. Thank you so much. Sabrina. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, it's been great. Thank you. All right, buddy. We'll see you on the next one.